majestic Olympic Stadium in Tokyo, and right from the opening ceremony, an electric feeling of excitement, anticipating the triumphs and the agonies to come. I was so thrilled when they issued us our uniform. I put it on, and I knew my dad and my mom knew I was an Olympian. And uh, it was sacred. I was humbled. I, I was going to represent my tribal nation. I was going to represent the United States of America. I didn't know right away that I would be a good runner. I didn't make the track team my freshman year in high school. But when I ran, I felt spiritual. Running got me through hardships. Running got me through loneliness. My mom died. And I recall the book my dad had read with me. It was not a published book. It was a collection of articles. And I wanted to become an Olympian. One of the articles said, Olympians are chosen by the gods. If I could become an Olympian, just maybe I could be chosen by the gods and I'd be able to see my mother again. I was probably 11 or 12 when my dad read that to me. And he died right before I turned 13. My sophomore year, I trained enough over the summer to some basic natural talent began to surface. The third race I won, then was undefeated the rest of my high school career in cross country. Yeah, the transition to college was extremely difficult. The races in college, I kept a lot in. I wouldn't tell my older brothers and sisters or my younger brother Chet. I just wouldn't say, but I was so close to being broken and didn't realize that being hypoglycemic borderline diabetic, there was a real quiet form of depression that comes with that. So then if you put the loneliness, uh, being off in a different world in a sense, having these wonderful guys around me as young friends, but never quite fitting into their world, uh, they could join the fraternity. I could not. They'd invite, be invited to some of the parties I couldn't go to. Then there's the racism of the African-American, but you never fit in there also. And neither of those two societies knew anything about the Native American world. So I was on the verge of jumping. And today it's so sacred to me, so powerful. Don't. All this energy, don't. And it sounded like my dad's voice. So I just stopped. I remember getting off the chair writing down a dream to heal a broken soul. I'm in the fourth lane, coming off the curve wide. A runner between Clark and Gamuti and me goes to lane five. And as I go by, I glance, and in the center of his jersey was an eagle. And I'm back to this little boy on the reservation when my dad would say, son, if you do these things, someday you can have wings of an eagle. I said, wings of an eagle. I'm gonna win, but I may not get to the finish line first, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to get there first and the tape breaking across my chest. And an official coming up to me and saying, who are you, who are you? And I respond with, oh my God, do I have one more lap to go? And he says, new Olympic champion. Found the athlete to tell him the eagle on his single had helped me win. There was no eagle. It was simply a perception. Then you're on the victory stand. They're playing the national anthem. I knew my family. I knew my parents, off in the spirit world, knew that I had become an Olympic champion. I'm going to win, Met. I healed a broken soul. And in the process, became an Olympic gold medalist in the 10,000 meter run. I, I was blessed with my dad empowering me so strongly that it takes a dream to heal broken souls, that I was always pursuing the dream.